Y'all the one that crawled in the bed and had sex and made that baby. He didn't ask to be born. That is shameful. Shameful. Are you kidding me? No, Mr. Carter, I'm not. You must be. I'm leaving and I'm going to the hospital. You Wise unbiased, a voice of reason. Those are some of the words used to describe judges and they are lords of their courtroom. But it seems power can maybe sometimes go to your head. We're bringing you the top times judges behaved badly on the bench. Welcome to Sidebar, presented by Law & Crime. I'm Jesse Weber. Look, I will tell you, I am not one who likes to beat up on judges, okay? It's a tough job. They play a pivotal role in our justice system, but you know what? We got to call it like we see it. They're human beings. They make mistakes. Sometimes their emotion gets the better of them. They do things that we have to call out. And that is what we are going to get into right now. Judges behaving badly. First up, let's start this off in Hamtramck, Michigan in January of 2022 in the courtroom of Judge Alexis Crott. An elderly gentleman, Burhan Chowdhury, is appearing via Zoom. And he's facing a fine for not cleaning up weeds and undergrowth around his property. And Chowdhury, EN 2103120. Mr. Chowdhury, say your full name. Mr. Chowdhury, take yourself off mute and say your full name. Yes, my name is Burhan Uddin Chowdhury. All right. You have a ticket from August 2nd, 2021, for failing to keep the fence, walkway, sidewalk, or alley free of weeds, trees, or other nuisance vegetation. Now, here's the thing. The 72-year-old Chowdhury, he had been battling cancer for three years. In fact, you can, I don't know, I hear him breathing heavily as he's explaining to this judge what's going on. The first offense, civil infraction, you can plead responsible, responsible with an explanation, or not responsible. I explain what that I am a cancer patient, very old man. And I am a cancer patient. I was then very weak. And this was sick. He was sick. See, very weak and this time of rainy season i cannot look look after this thing but if chowdhury was expecting sympathy he wasn't getting it from judge crot you should be ashamed of yourself Come on. if i could give you jail time on this i would the fine is one hundred dollars paid by February first. You better get that cleaned up. That is totally inappropriate. Oh no, you don't. Jail time? Jail time. So at that point, Chowdhury's son Shabir jumps on the call to try to clarify things, while his father, at least to me, seems to be in disbelief in the background. Sorry, ma'am. Didn't understand. Like uh, we have to pay hundred dollar by February. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. I. Oh, okay. Like, huh, is it, ma'am, forgivable because my father is currently sick and we clean that Did after? You see that photo? Yes. I am very sick, ma'am. That is shameful. Shameful. The neighbor should not have to look at that. You should be ashamed of yourself. Yes, I am. Sorry. Shabir says that since his father was diagnosed with lymphoma, he and his mother have been the ones to maintain that property. But when this ticket was issued, Shabir was actually out of the country. Now, he indicated that the yard has already been cleaned up by the time they went to court. So the Chowdhury's, they did end up paying that $100 fine. And video of what happened here went absolutely viral. And as you can imagine, people were furious over what Judge Crott did. In fact, there were calls for Judge Crott to step down from the bench. She ended up apologizing, saying, quote, I made a mistake. I acted intemperately. I'm very embarrassed that I did so. I apologize to the person who appeared before me and to our entire community for having failed to meet the high standards that we expect of our judicial officers and that I expect myself. The judge ended up reporting herself to a state commission that investigates judicial misconduct. The Judicial Tenure Commission said that Judge Crott violated a couple of tenants 
of the Michigan Code of Judicial Conduct, but added that she acknowledged her error, took responsibility, apologized, and the commission ended up dismissing the complaint that she was facing, but with caution, meaning she's got to be careful in the future. Okay, next up, we're in Montgomery County, Ohio, for a civil hearing back on August 9th, 2022. Selena Saunders has filed a lawsuit against her previous employer, the Regional Transit Authority for Dayton, and she claimed disability and sexual discrimination. The disability suit was dropped, but the discrimination case still went ahead. So at this point, Saunders' attorney is Julius Carter, and he approaches the bench that day and tells the judge that there's been a sudden family emergency and he'd like to be dismissed for the day. That's an eye for you, so I need to end it for the day pretty shortly. Things have changed. We, we will discuss that when the jury is not in the courtroom. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to take a break. So Carter gets ready to leave for the hospital, but then Judge Mary K. Huffman prepares for the next witness. The record will, will reflect that the jury is not present. Counsel in parties remain present. All right, the defendant has indicated an intention to call uh, Ms. Crutcher by way, I'm sorry, plaintiff has indicated an intention to call Ms. Crutcher by way of her videotape deposition taken on March the 16th. I did review that deposition and the following portions. I'm, I'm just going to go through it and, and tell you which portions based upon objections I have sustained the objection. Yeah, the judge starts walking through the deposition and what parts she will allow as Carter takes notes. But when the judge asks about a specific part of the deposition, Carter reminds her that he requested to be allowed to leave. Page 44, um, there is an objection. Uh, the question is, if Mr. Shank had the same disciplinary record as Ms. Saunders at the time of the offense, what would the outcome have been? There was an objection by Mr. Carter. What's the basis of that, Mr. Carter? I have no idea without looking at the information. Well, it's on, page, let, four, it's on page 44 of the deposition. I've let the court know I need to get to the hospital. Mr. I'm Carter. I'm to be excused to do so. Mr. Carter, I am not going to do that at this time. We are going to finish with this witness. On page 44 of the de everything after line four. Again, they don't need to hear you guys talk about whether her health and praying for her. That's not appropriate. So that those, and that's made part of the record. Mr. Carter, if you need to not be in here during the deposition, that's fine. But um, I, I'm not going to stop the trial. If you need to go outside and make calls or something, that's fine. When Ms. Crutcher's deposition is finished for the day, if uh, it appears to be appropriate time-wise, then we'll conclude for the day. Say that again, please. If you need to step out and make calls or do something during the deposition, you should feel free to do so. But I am not going to stop the trial at this point. If you had a family emergency, you contacted the bailiff late last week and said you had a family issue. You didn't ask for a continuance. You didn't ask for a phone conference. Unfortunately, life experiences happen, and I apologize for those. But I am concerned about a jury, and we're in the middle of a trial. Are so. you kidding me? No, Mr. Carter, yeah, I'm you, not. You must be. I'm leaving, and I'm going to the hospital. You can feel free to uh, do you so. you want to continue to play the video, that's fine. Sir, you can make your choice okay. about what you choose to do. Okay. Amy, would you please bring the jury back in? Wow. So it ends up that Carter packs up his things. He starts to leave. His client, who appears not sure what to do herself, also gets up to leave, too. And that is when Judge Huffman jumps in. Frankly, if you leave and don't call this witness, Mr. Carter, if you leave, I, I am going to find in favor of the plaintiff. He is not called a witness, and I am not playing the video without the witness being called by counsel. Amy, would you go get him and tell him if he doesn't come back in here, I am going to grant judgment for the defendant. I will have no choice. He has not called the witness, and I cannot call the witness. So here's what happened. Carter didn't come back to court. The judge ruled in favor of the defendant, and Carter's sister was reportedly taken off of life support the following day. When it comes to Selena Saunders' case, Carter filed an appeal saying Judge Huffman's decision was unreasonable. But in the end, the appeals court agreed with the judge's decision. As we question judges' decisions here and their interpretation of the laws and the rules, let me talk to you about a law firm that knows the law inside and out. Morgan & Morgan, our great sponsor here on Sidebar, the largest injury law firm in the whole country. 
It's important to realize that if you're ever seriously hurt, you have to know how to protect your rights and whether your injury could be worth millions of dollars. That is where Morgan & Morgan, the country's largest personal injury law firm, comes in. Not all law firms are the same. And if you're going to be dealing with the big insurance companies who often lowball claims, you need a big firm. And Morgan & Morgan is big for a reason. They win a lot. I'm going to give you an example. Morgan & Morgan, they went to trial and they saw verdicts in the past couple of months of $12 million in Florida, $26 million in Philadelphia, and $6.8 million in New York. Now, mind you, these are all considerably higher than the highest insurance offers for these accidents. But what Morgan & Morgan also does so well is they have modernized the personal injury process for their clients because you can submit a claim, talk to your whole legal team, all from your smartphone. That's it. It only takes a few minutes to see if you have a case. And get this, the fee, absolutely free unless you win. So to start your claim now with Morgan & Morgan, go to forthepeople.com slash LC Sidebar or click the link in the description and pinned in the comments. Okay, over now to Durham, North Carolina, where a custody dispute devolved into a screaming match. In August of 2014, Roshana and Colin Morrison were in a battle over custody of their child. Roshana claimed that Colin had abandoned their son, who was three years old. Colin countered that Roshana was keeping him from seeing the child. So they were in court in front of Judge James Hill for three days, and by the end of the third day, Judge Hill had grown frustrated with both parents. It just boggles my mind that, of course, as long, every time I sit in here, it still gets to me to how two folks can crawl out of bed and get the most intimate way to make a beautiful baby and get along so good in April 2010 because we have proof positive of what happened in April 2010 because the baby was born. That's nine months. Two parents, and I'm going to choose my words very carefully here. Two parents can come in and act like such idiots when it's not about the two of you. I could care less about the two of you. I could. The two of you are not important. What's important is being. And you don't need to see two adults acting like idiots. Did I say the word idiots? It's not about you, it's about me. What the two of you have done to that little boy is unconscionable. I'm talking to both of you. It is unconscionable what you have done to that little boy. He does not deserve this. Y'all the one that crawled into bed and had sex and made that baby. He didn't ask to be born. But he was. And y'all can hate each other's guts, but y'all better act nice and lovey dovey and everything else when you're around that little boy. And I better not hear either of you saying anything negative about the other party. Or y'all will get a little trip to the Durham County bed and breakfast for contempt of court. And there is no appeal. You stay till I say you get out. I'm talking to both of you. Am I clear? Yes. I have no doubt that you have withheld that little boy from me. Don't don't you be looking at me. I have not withheld. You say one more word, you get, you say one more word, you're gonna go to the Durham County bed breakfast today. You say one more word. All right. Deputy Neville, she's got 24 hours of contempt of court to run her back as soon as we get done with the set. Don't you leave this court with your test. She's got 24 hours of contempt of court to run her back, and I told her to shut it. So you got 24 hours in the Durham County bed of breakfast right now because you ran your mouth and I told you to be quiet. I never. Been. All right, you got 48 hours. You want to say it again? She's got 48 hours there, Deputy. Deputy Harper, you got 48 hours there. Every time you open your mouth, I'm going to tap on another 24. And if you open your mouth, I'm going to do the same to you. Judge Hill gets back to the matter at hand, custody of the three-year-old son. Both parents are fit and proper persons to have custody of the amount of child. I'm awarded joint custody. Just say it again. I can't do this. This is a disgrace. What you guys are doing, you need to neglect your son for nine months. You don't take care of him. You're a drunk. You have a mystery. 
Thank you have a fucking destiny and be recognized. I take care of my faith consistently, and I give credit to what she chooses to be in his son's life whenever he feels like it. We're going to take this destiny back. We're going to go out for being a good mother. But things get even more chaotic as the woman's family members get involved. Tell me how that thing is. Man, you're there. Man. And Roshana's brother comes forward, appears to try to calm his sister down, but when things turn physical and more bailiffs rush into the courtroom, her brother is caught in the middle. Yeah, the brother allegedly pushed the officer away and the officer took out his gun. Morrison's mother also ends up in custody for her involvement. Now, during the chaos, Judge Hill got up from the bench, left the courtroom, ended up returning once things had calmed down to continue laying out custody rules for those who were still present. Now, the Judicial Standards Commission reviewed a complaint against Judge Hill and said it was inappropriate to call the jail, quote, the Durham County Bed and Breakfast, and it was inappropriate to call the parents idiots. They also noted that Judge Hill failed to follow applicable law when handling disruptive courtroom behavior and did not follow proper procedure when finding the mother in contempt of court. He was given a public reprimand, and he, Judge Hill, would go on to say, quote, my choice of words left something to be desired. My goal in the hearing was to point out to them who the most important person in that hearing was, the child. What they were doing was hurting that child who was innocent. Next up, we're in Cleveland, Ohio, and it's the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic and lockdowns in March of 2020. We all remember that? Well, the Cleveland Municipal Court had ordered that civil and criminal cases be rescheduled to try to keep COVID-19 from spreading. But the courtroom of Judge Pinky Carr seem to remain open. I can't believe you people braved it coming down here. Everybody else was scared. We're not scared. I'm yeah, so well, glad we're here. Scared. You're scared? Okay, yes, Linda, you stay there. Away. You stay there, Linda. I had to come in. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Derez, hearing no response, note the time, 855, officer present, no defendant, KPS will be issued. Thanks, officer. Have a good day. Be safe out there. Good to see you. Capius is a bench warrant, so Judge Carr seems to be issuing warrants for people not coming to court, despite the ruling from court leadership, which is noted on the court website. Capius, bond is set at 10000 originally called at 9.07, note the time, 9, 9.10, Capius, bond is set at 5000 You know what, I'll just put a straight capius on Okay. When lawyers in the courtroom questioned Judge Carr's decision, she said if people came in, she was going to have their hearing. But she denied issuing warrants despite it being on video? If people came to court and they were willing to, willing to risk their health, I figured I would return the favor. As far as issuing warrants for their arrest, Absolutely untrue. Defendant was Capius on February the 22nd. Capius again. First degree driving under the influence. Bond is set at $5,000. After a few days of this, Judge Carr stopped issuing the warrants. Hearing no response. Note the time. 844. Set for trial. The person is not here, as I've noted all week. Corona, day three. You're all set. Thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> Unbelievable. Mm, mm, mm. 
you are keeping your courtroom open only for those people that might not be seeing it on the news, that it's closed, and if they come, you want to be here. That's why you're keeping your, your courtroom open. Absolutely. I mean, it's not fair. If a person is willing to take time out of their schedule, if they're missing work, if they feel that their case is more important than their health, I mean, it's the least I can do. When the Chief Justice was informed about what was going on, she stayed Judge Carr's orders and arrest warrants, and she also disqualified Judge Carr from presiding over criminal and traffic cases involving non-jail defendants for as long as the coronavirus order was in place. You fast forward to 2022, and Judge Carr was suspended indefinitely and removed from office by the Ohio Supreme Court after the court found she exhibited, quote, unprecedented conduct over a two-year period that covered not only the coronavirus incidents, but also several other ethics violations, including abusing her power to hold someone in contempt, holding hearings without a prosecutor present, and having defendants give her items like food or drinks for more lenient sentences. Then, in 2023, Carr entered a no-contest plea to three counts of falsification. Yeah, Carr made false statements in court records between May 2019 and June 2020. She was sentenced to four months probation, and she no longer has a law license. All right, we're going to finish things up and end in Seminole County, Florida, where a judge lost his patience with a man waiting in the back of the courtroom. So a woman is at the lectern speaking through a translator in Judge Wayne Culver's courtroom in 2022, and Kevin Newton enters at the back. He's charged with petty theft and resisting an officer after he allegedly put a case of beer in a duffel bag and walked out of a convenience store with it. He's early for a pretrial hearing and appears to be looking for a seat. Well, when a bailiff tells Newton to sit down, he responds loudly. Sir, I'm doing something. Can you shut up and sit down? That's not shutting up. And things really escalated from there. You want to be held to contempt and go to jail? I asked you a question. Then shut up. So this incident was reported, and Judge Culver sent an email to his colleagues apologizing. He said in part, quote, There is no excuse for my behavior, and I truly regret my actions. I assure you it was an isolated incident outside my normal temperament, but I understand how my behavior will affect how we all are perceived by the public we serve. We represent a branch of government and each other, no matter where we are or what we are doing, but our behavior on the bench is paramount. Hmm, isolated? I say that because this is allegedly not the first time Judge Culver has lost his composure in court. For example, the Judicial Qualifications Commission found that Judge Culver violated the rules of criminal procedure and the Code of Judicial Conduct when he told the defendant that if he interrupts a witness again, he would send the defendant to jail for so long the defendant would have to have the jail renamed after him and then proceeded to sentence the defendant to three consecutive contempt sentences totaling originally 537 days in jail, but then modified down to 179 days in jail. At the time of this recording, he is now facing new ethics violations. That's what's being reported, and his case is still pending. All right, everybody, that is all we have for you here on Sidebar. Thank you so much for watching us here and tuning in. As always, please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Jesse Weber. I'll speak to you next time. Thank you.